we are going to talk about pericyclic reaction. Before the classification of this group of reactions, organic chemists used to talk about ionic and radical reactions. So, what is a pericyclic reaction? A pericyclic reaction is which all changes in bonding occur in a concerted manner. through cyclic transition state. This classification was first reported in 1965 by Woodward and Hoffman. the 1981 Nobel Prize Chemistry was shared by Roald Hoffman and Ken Ichi Fukui. Woodward was not part of the Nobel Prize because in 1965 he had been awarded the Nobel Prize for his work in synthesis. Obviously, when you see this kind of picture, it means that we have an important breakthrough coming in. More important, not only Nobel Prize, but a very short gap between discovery and price. If one talks of penicillin, gap between discovery and price is almost 30 years. You talk of DNA structure, gap between discovery and prize is more than 25 years. So, not only a Nobel Prize, but a very short gap between discovery and prize. Pericyclic reactions can be categorized into three types. Electrocyclic, cycloaddition, sigmatropic. So, typical example of an electrocyclic reaction is the conversion of butadiene to cyclobutene. If I push the arrows only to make it more clear, that is the kind of change that we are talking about. If I look at left hand side, we have two pi bonds in the product we have made a new sigma bond. So, there is one pi bond, one sigma bond and a ring. If we go from left to right, we call this as a ring forming reaction. If you go from right to left, it is obviously a ring opening reaction. That would be another example of this. Hexatriene getting converted to cyclohexadiene. If I look on the left hand side, I have three pi bonds. If I look in the product, I have two pi bonds, I have made one sigma bond and I made a ring. So, in an electrocyclic reaction, what we are putting is we are going from n pi bonds to n minus 1 pi bonds plus a sigma bond plus a ring. In our next group of reactions, the cycloaddition, addition, 
that is a very famous reaction. What is this very famous reaction? Diels Alder. Our starting materials on left hand side have 2 pi bonds plus 1 pi bond, total of 3 pi bonds. In my product, I have 1 pi bond and I have made 2 new sigma bonds in a ring. Another example would be the reaction of 2, mat two molecules of ethylene. to give you cyclobutane. So, on the left hand side 1 plus 1 pi bond total 2 pi bonds, we have made 2 sigma bonds plus a ring. If I go from left to right, I call it as a cycloaddition. If I go from right to left, this is a cyclo reversion. So, in a cycloaddition, I am going from n pi to n minus 2 pi plus 2 sigma bonds in a ring. <coughs> My third type of reaction is a sigma tropic reaction. I look at this deuterated cycloheptatline What have I done? I have broken the sigma bond at one place and formed the new sigma bond at a different place. Why have I shown this arrow? It must involve a cyclic transition state. If it does not involve a cyclic transition state, it is not going to be a pericyclic reaction. So, number of double bonds 3 pi 1 ring, 3 pi 1 ring. In an electrocyclic, you go from n pi to n minus 1 pi. In a cyclo addition, you go from n pi to n minus 2 pi. In a sigma tropic, no change in number of double bonds, no change in number of rings. Another example of the sigma tropic reaction is this. Let us look on the left hand side, total 4 pi bonds. In the product, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi bonds. Starting material 1 ring 4 pi bonds, product has got 1 ring 4 pi bonds. No change in number of double bonds, no change in number of rings. What is the last step of this reaction? Compound becomes aromatic. What have we done in the first step? We have broken the sigma bond at this place. We have formed a new sigma bond at a different place. If I look at this step, I have broken the sigma bond, this sigma bond, I have formed the new sigma bond here. This step is not called as a pericyclic reaction because it is acid catalyzed and as we will see when we give the features of a pericyclic reaction, 
we say that in a pericyclic reaction there is no significant role for acid or base. So, the first step is pericyclic, the second step aromatization is not a pericyclic reaction. What is this very famous reaction? This is the Claisen rearrangement. Okay. So, we have given our classification in electrocyclic cycloaddition sigma tropic. Now, we are looking at our next that is what are the features of a pericyclic reaction. Obviously, feature number one it must be concerted and it must involve cyclic transition state. Number two, no role for acid or base no role for <coughs> electrophiles or nucleophiles. <coughs> These features obviously differentiate a pericyclic reaction from an ionic reaction. No significant change in rate by change in polarity of solvent. As you are well aware, if it is ionic, when I change the solvent, make it more polar, reaction rate increases. No change in rate by addition of added salts. So, once again that is a feature which differentiates pericyclic from ionic reaction. What is the feature that will differentiate pericyclic from radical reaction? No role for radical initiators I put it like this radical initiator or radical quencher. Obviously, this differentiates a pericyclic reaction from a radical reaction. Reaction is carried out either with heat or light. When we do it with heat, we call it as a thermal reaction and we show it as a triangle. When we call it, do it with light, we call it as a photochemical reaction and show it by the symbol H nu. The important aspect of this is when I do this, if I do it with heat, I get one stereochemical result. If I do it with light, I get a different stereochemical result. Therefore, it is not that this is only supplying energy, there is an important difference between these two. When I do it with heat reaction takes place from vibrationally excited ground state. When I do it with light reaction takes place from an electronically excited state.
let us clarify what exactly we mean by this. This is your bonding orbital and that is your anti bonding orbital. So, in a thermal reaction we have electrons only in bonding orbitals we do not have any electrons in anti bonding orbital. We give energy that still remain only in the bonding orbitals supplying energy to go from ground state to excited state, but which is still in bonding orbitals. Okay. When I do a photochemical reaction electron goes from bonding orbital to anti bonding orbital. Earlier the anti bonding orbital was vacant. So, electron has been transferred from bonding orbital to anti bonding orbital. This is called as the ground state singlet. This is excited singlet. Electron has gone from bonding orbital to anti bonding. Then we have a process which we call as intersystem crossing. What have we done now? We have changed the spin of this electrons. The Frank Condell principle says that when I excite a molecule there is no change in spin, but in the intersystem crossing the spin of the electron becomes different. In this case both electrons have opposite spins, here both electrons have the same spin. So, we call this as a triplet excited state. Triplet excited states have longer lifetime than singlet excited states. Why? In singlet when this electron comes back, it goes directly into ground state, but for this first spin inversion has to take place and only then it can go to ground state. Therefore, triplet excited states have longer lives than singlet excited. Please note when I say longer life, we are talking of 10 raise to 6, 10 raise to 9 seconds, okay. 10 raise to 6 to 10 raise to minus 9 seconds. So, usually photochemical reactions take place from the longer lived triplet excited state, and it does not mean that photochemical reaction does not take place from singlet excited state, but because singlet excited states are shorter lived most often reaction takes place from a triplet excited. So, the difference in stereochemical result is in thermal reaction we are looking only at electrons in bonding orbitals, in photochemical reaction we are looking at electrons in anti bonding orbitals. We can analyze a pericyclic reaction by looking at forward reaction or by looking at back reaction. This is what is called as the principle of microscopic reversibility. If you know the way to go from Pune to Mumbai, obviously you know the road to come from Mumbai to Pune. That is the picture that we see. Okay. The seventh important feature is pericyclic reactions are usually stereo specific. Let me immediately add ionic reactions can also be stereo specific, radical reactions can also be stereo specific. So, stereo specific does not differentiate this. Okay. 
what is an example of an ionic reaction which is stereospecific? Your SN2 reaction. Reaction takes place to give you inversion of configuration. If you talk an elimination, we talk of an E2 elimination. Trans geometry will give you, sorry, erythro compound will give you, trans geometry 3O compound will give you cis geometry. All right. So, stereo specific you can get for ionic, you can get for radical, you also get for pericyclic. Let us clarify exactly what we mean by stereo specific. That is your ester, E stands for ester. What will you call this ester? What name will you give to this ester? This is the ester of malic acid. Okay. When I use this ester of malic acid, I get product in which both ester groups are cis. If instead of using malic acid, I use what is this acid now? Fumaric acid. Okay. I use the ester of fumaric acid. The product will now have both ester groups cis. Starting material A gives me product B. Starting material A dashed gives me product B dashed. Two different isomers of starting material give me two different isomers of the product that is then called as a stereo specific reaction. If I have a reaction like this, A gives me B, A dashed also gives me B, even though there is another isomer B dashed. Then we call this reaction as stereo select. So, in a stereo specific reaction, isomer A must give you product B, isomer A dash must give you different product B dash. If it is 100 percent, we say it is 100 percent stereo specific. If first reaction gives you 90 percent A, 10 percent B, second reaction gives you 90 percent B, B dash, 10 percent B then we say it is 90 percent stereo specific. Okay. So, we have listed the features of a pericyclic reaction. Why are pericyclic reactions important? What is the importance of a pericyclic reaction? After all, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon carbon bond formation. So, in all of this, we are having carbon carbon bond formation. Number two, reaction is stereo specific. Number three, reaction takes place in high yield. Why does the reaction take place in high yield? If I am looking at an ionic reaction, A gives me B, B goes to C, C goes to D, D goes to E. Then B will give me some intermediate some impurity of B dash, C will give me impurity of C dash, 
d will give me impurity of d dash. So, besides e I will get b dash c dash d dash therefore, you will have low yield, but in a pericyclic reaction no intermediates are involved you directly go from a to e no intermediates either there will be a and e but nothing else. If you want to send a small child from Pune to Delhi then what is your problem? You tell the child it will take long time this thing that thing do not get down anywhere, but child does not have understanding of what is long time after 2 hours he thinks it is a very long time and station will come and he will get down and then of course, parents will be in great difficulty he can get down at any station. So, what do wise parents do? Send him only by air. He can go get down, get up in Pune, he can get down only in Delhi. So, no problem. You put him in the aeroplane, at A, somebody picks him up at Delhi, no chance of making a mistake. So, high yield because there is no intermediate. In ionic and radical, there are several intermediates and therefore, you can get. Okay. Now, we are going to look at our first class of pericyclic reaction and that is your electrocyclic reaction. Okay. Now, I am going to emphasize two rules. Number one is class should not have me talking and you listening okay, or you sleeping also all right. What I want is you should ask. Okay. So, if you have a doubt do not keep your mouth closed immediately ask all right. I know that when I was a student I also did not ask. Okay. But now the days are different and it is time you asked. In spite of this, I know you are not going to ask. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, what is the alternative? I am going to ask lots of things. And my request is you try to answer. Does not matter if it is right or wrong, try. In fact, wrong answer teaches you many more things than the right answer. So, I am going to ask you lot of questions and I want you to try, do not be afraid. What is our usual fear? If I do not answer, all my friends will think that I do not know anything. Forget it, your friends also do not know many things. So, there should be no barrier in this, all right. So, let us start with our first question. What is the systematic name for this compound? What is the first thing you will see? Ring is four membered. So, cyclobutane, okay. Then there is a double bond. So, cyclobutene. Then what is the next step? It has two metals. So, you must give the position of the metals. So, that is the question from where should I start the numbering? Three, four dimethyl. 3, 4 dimethyl cyclobutene. Why 3, 4? Double bond must have smallest number. So,
3, 4 dimethyl cyclobutene. Is that enough or I must add something else? Cis. So, we are looking at cis 3, 4 dimethyl cyclobutene. Okay. What are we going to do? We are going to break this sigma bond and convert this cyclobutene into butadiene. Okay. So, you imagine that this is a watch, all right. What is this position the watch? 12 position, 3 position, 6 position, 9 position. Okay. So, we are going to open this orbital in a clockwise manner. So, I am going to take this orbital from 3 position to 6 position. When I take this orbital from 3 position to 6 position, what will happen to this methyl group? Where will it go? It will go inside, methyl group will come inside. Now, you look at this watch, where is this orbital? This orbital is at the 9 position. We are going to take it to 12 position. When I take this orbital to 12 position, where will the methyl group go? Outside. Okay. Now, what is this? This is your p orbitals of the double bond. Now, what we want to do? What type of orbital is this? sp3 orbital. We are going to convert this sp3 orbital into p orbital. And therefore, that is your product. What do we see? This double bond is cis, this double bond is trans. Give a systematic name to this compound. That is not a systematic name. When you make nomenclature, you must first decide which is the longest carbon chain. Okay. So, you should start from either this metal or that metal. So, what is the product? 2, 4 hexadiene, but you want to make it complete trans 2 cis 4 hexadiene. Okay. Now, in my next operation, I am going to move these orbitals in anti clockwise manner. If I am going to move this orbital in anti clockwise manner, where should this orbital go? From 3 position, it must go to 12 position. When it goes to 12 position, what will happen to the methyl group? Where will it go? Outside or inside? Outside. 
know, old people cannot hear properly, all right? And I am a very old person, so speak little bit loudly, okay? Now, this is also going to move in anti-clockwise manner. Yes, please. Where will that orbital go? Where will the orbital go? Metal group will go inside. Orbital should go from 9 position to 6 position. And methyl group will go inside. Therefore, after I complete the process, now this double bond is trans, that double bond is cis. Are the two compounds same or different? Same. I start the numbering from this side, it will become the same. Okay. In my starting material, both my substituents were methyl group. Now, I have taken one methyl group and one ethyl group. What is the systematic name you will give to this compound? Where should I start numbering? From here or from here? From where should I start the numbering? <coughs> Will you start from methyl group or ethyl group? Eh? If I start from ethyl, what will happen? 1, 2, 3, double bond is at 3 position. If I start from here, double bond is at 2 position. Therefore, I must start the numbering from the methyl. So, now it is a 2, 5 heptadi. And now there is no ambiguity, cis 2 trans 4 heptadi. In this process, now what will happen? Numbering will start from here. So, that will be trans 2 cis 4 heptadi. So, if the substituents are different, the two processes will give me different products. Yeah. Orbital number 3 is moving clockwise. Orbital number 4 is moving anti-clockwise. Where will that orbital 3 go? It is at 3 position, I have to move it clockwise. I should take it to 6 position. When it goes to 6 position, where will the methyl group go? Inside. Now, I am going to take the orbital at 4 position, it is going to move anti-clockwise. Miss, where will that orbital go? It will go to 6 position. Where will the methyl group go? Inside. What will I see? 
lot of problem between the two metal groups. So, compound is cis cis hexadi. What are these two? Are they configurational isomers? Are they conformational isomers? Are they totally different? They are conformational isomers. What have I done? I have simply rotated around this bond. So, in transition state, there is lot of problem. After transition state, there is no problem. This is like what happens in India. If you stand at the bus stop, till the bus comes, line is very good. And moment the bus comes, everybody goes out. Okay? Push, 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 push. Good Indian should push. If he goes in straight line, something is wrong with him. I push. What about you? You push or no? Okay. You obviously push. All right. So, but afterwards, what do you see? Everybody gets position. Everybody gets place. But at the door, gusao, push. All right. So, that is typical of our. All right. Now, three moves anti clockwise, four moves clockwise. So, three moves anti clockwise means where should that three orbital go? 12 position. Where will the methyl group go? Outside? Outside. Four is going to move clockwise. So, from nine position it will go to twelve position and your methyl group will again go outside. So, this will give you trans trans product. So, when Woodward and Hoffman introduce this, if both move clockwise or both move anti clockwise, they called it con rotatory. If one moves clockwise, one moves anti clockwise. They called it disrotatory. When they introduce this word, they said everybody will know what is clockwise, what is anti clockwise. But after few years, American children now do not know, at least till few years back, they did not know what is clockwise or anti clockwise because they were not using this type of watch, they were using digital. So, they do not know what is clockwise, what is anti clockwise. All Indian children know what is clockwise or anti clockwise. Moment the lecture knows. Everybody knows what is clockwise. Okay, all right. So we have the advantage over there. All right. So we did this on the blackboard. Now we are going to do this with the model. Okay, all right. Greens are metal groups. Whites are hydrogens. That red is a double bond and this is the orbital that we are going to open. All right. This is your carbon number 3, this is your carbon number 4. 3 moves clockwise, All right. 3 moves clockwise. So, from 3 position it goes to 6 position. Where is the methyl group? 
methyl group is inside. From 9 position, it goes to 12 position. Where is the methyl group? Methyl group was outside. What is the product? This double bond is cis, that double bond is trans. Okay. Now, let us do the other one. Move both in anti clockwise manner. So, from 3 position, it goes to 12 position. Where did the methyl group go? Outside. This orbital from 9 position anti clockwise, it should go to 6 position methyl group was inside. Now, this double bond is trans, that double bond is cis. Okay. Now, we are moving 3 in clockwise manner. So, from 3 position, it goes to 6 position methyl group goes inside. This is now going from 9 position anti clockwise, it is going to 6 position methyl group goes inside. This is now single bond. If I do this, problem is not serious, but in the transition state, problem is very serious. Okay. Let us do the last one. 3 is going to move anti clockwise. So, from 3 position, it goes to 12 position and this is going to move clockwise. So, from 9 position, it goes to 12 position. So, both metals are outside, both double bonds are trans. No problem? Everything clear? Everybody is everything clear? No difficulty at all? Okay, I have. Why did we move this from 3 position to 6 position? Why not 9 position? Why not 7 position? What did we say? This orbital is to be made into p orbital. So, it must be parallel to this. So, I can only move it to 6 position or to 12 position. Okay? All right. Long back, there used to be the people used to ask in the old days in Greece, everybody says God is there. So, somebody asked a Greek philosopher, hey, God is there, God is there, what is the proof? He said, no, there is a very good proof. What is the proof? See how wise God is. Where has he kept the eyes? Here. Where did he get the ears? Here. Why? He knew that when you become old, you will have to wear spectacles. So, if your ears were here or somewhere here, you would have a problem. Okay? So, that is the proof that God is there. All right. God also knew that organic chemists will have problem. So, that is the second proof that God is there. So, that is your orbital which you are going to open that is your two metal groups. So, move it to 6 position. What happens? Methyl group goes inside. Move this to 12 position, methyl group goes outside. Move it anti clockwise, this is inside, that is outside. Move this clockwise, methyl group goes inside. Move this anti clockwise, both are inside. Do it opposite, both are outside. So, what have you to remember? In con rotatory, one thumb is up, one thumb is down. In dis rotatory, both are up or both are down. So, how do you remember? This rotatory means you think of thumbs up, all right? You drink thumbs up or no? All right. So, that is your dis rotatory. It is a thumbs up or a thumbs down. In con rotatory, one is up, one is down. Okay. What are the salient features of what we have spoken? Number one, pericyclic reactions are of three types, electrocyclic, cycloaddition, sigmatropic. Then electrocyclic, you go from n pi to n minus 1 pi. In a cycloaddition, you go from n pi to n minus 2 pi. In a sigmatropic, 
if you go from n pi to n pi, no change in number of double bonds, no change in number of ligands. Okay. Then we gave the features of the pericyclic reaction. Then we emphasized what is the importance of pericyclic reaction. You get carbon carbon bond formation, you get stereospecific, you get high yield. Today, if you want to synthesize any big molecule, usually there will be at least two or three pericyclic reactions. Okay. Then we looked at electrocyclic, and when we looked at electrocyclic, we have con rotatory. In con rotatory, you move both orbitals either clockwise or both orbitals anti clockwise. In a disrotatory, you move one in clockwise manner, one in anti clockwise manner. So, con rotatory, thumbs are up. In disrotatory, both up or both down. Okay. That is the features that we had looked at. What was the important contribution? These things were known. If I take a system which has four electrons, this is a four electron system. Which are the four electrons? Two electrons of the double bond, two electrons of the single bond. In the product, your four electrons are the four electrons of the two double bonds. When you do, sorry, when you do the reaction with four electrons, After looking at lot of reactions, you find that product is convoluted. If I do it photochemical, the product is disrotated. When I do it with six electrons. The thermal reaction is disrotatory, the photochemical reaction is convoluted. If I use 8 electron system or 12 electron system, thermal reaction is convoluted, photochemical reaction is disrotatory. 10 electrons or 14 electrons, thermal reaction is disrotatory, photochemical reaction is gone. 4 electron system behaves in one way, 4 n plus 2 behaves in different way, which is the very famous rule that links to this Huckel's rule. What is that Huckel's rule? A closed cyclic system with 4 n plus 2 pi electrons is aromatic, and if it has 4 n, it is anti aromatic. So, once you correlate with this, it seems to follow some logic 4 is arom anti aromatic, 6 is aromatic. So, we now say it like this. Why are we using Q? We do not want to comfort, confuse with the Huckel rule. So, 4 Q, the thermal reaction is con rotatory, photochemical reaction is disrotatory. 4 Q plus 2, picture is opposite. Thermal reaction is disrotatory, photochemical reaction is con rotatory. So, that is the picture that you see now.
you heat it. How many electrons? Two electrons here, two electrons here. So, it is a four Q cyst. Therefore, reaction should be convoluted. So, in order that we do not make any confusion, let us see this. What are these two? These are your methyl groups and your thumbs are smooth in opposite direction, sorry in clockwise direction, both clockwise or both anti-clockwise. So, clockwise, clockwise. So, what will happen? One methyl group will be outside, one methyl group will be inside. one double bond trans, one double bond cis. How many electrons involved? Two electrons. So, it is a two electrons here, two electrons here. So, it is a four electron system. All right, four electron system. What does our rule tell us? The photochemical reaction is going to be disrotated. Four electron thermal reaction, four electron photochemical reaction is going to be disrotated. All right. So, how are we going to look at this? One methyl group is outside and this methyl group is inside. So, that is the picture that you have. Now, disrotating means thumb should move in opposite direction. So, this is moving clockwise, this will move anti clockwise. So, your product will have one methyl group up, one methyl group down. If I do the opposite, result will be this one is down, this one is up, but end result both are trans. All right. Okay. Give a systematic name to this compound. Where should I start numbering from? From methyl group. So, it has 8 carbons, octa tri. Then, where are the double bonds? 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6 octa tri. Then, what? Trans, cis. So, that is trans, cis, trans. 2, 4, 6 octa tri. Okay. Product is cyclic with two double bonds. How many electrons? 6 pi electrons or 3 pi bonds product gives 2 pi bonds. So, it is a electrocyclic reaction, n pi going to 
n minus 1 pi. Okay. Now, six electron thermal reaction. What does our rule tell us? Six electron thermal reaction is going to be disrotatory. So, how are my methyl groups? One methyl, both the methyl groups are outside. Disrotatory means thumb should move in opposite direction. This is clockwise, this is anti clockwise. So, product is going to be cis. Okay. Six electron photochemical reaction. It must be con rotatory. Right. So, your two metal groups are outside. Con rotatory means thumbs must move in the same direction. So, one product will be one metal group will be above, one metal group will be below. What are we seeing? Thermal reaction has given cis product, photochemical reaction has given trans product. So, when I do it with photochemistry, I get different result. What will I call this compound? Trans, cis, cis. All right. Okay. Thermal reaction. Six electrons. Six electron thermal reaction is going to be disrotated. So, one metal group is outside. One metal group is inside. This rotatory means thumbs must move in opposite direction. So, product will be one metal group up, one metal group down. Isomer A gave me product B. Isomer A dash gave me product B dash. Reaction is stereo specific. Now, we have the next question. In this reaction, what happened? Open chain compound gave me cyclic product. In this reaction, what happened? Cyclic product gave me open chain product. So, in one case we went from open chain to cyclic, in the other one we went from cyclic to open chain. Okay. In a thermal reaction, you always go from less stable to more stable. All right. So, this is your A, A goes to B, less stable goes to more stable. What do we say? For such a reaction, we say reaction is exothermic. Okay. So, we have to answer this question. Why are we going 
from this to this open chain to cyclic. How many sigma bonds are there in this? Every double bond is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sigma bonds and 1, 2, 3, pi bonds. In my product, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sigma bonds and 2 pi bonds. So, overall we are converting pi bond to sigma bond. Which is better? Which is more stable? Sigma bond is more stable. Why sigma bond is more stable? Sigma bond is formed like this. Overlap is head on. Pi bond is formed by lateral overlap. This is head on overlap. Okay? All right. To which you say, you look at the compound, can you see like this, like this, all this, bakwas. All right, I do not believe it, all right. So, how do we find out? I measure the heat of combustion. What do I mean heat of combustion? I take such a compound, burn it in the presence of oxygen, it will become carbon dioxide, hydrogen will become water. I measure that heat of combustion. And from this, I find carbon carbon bond 140 kilocalories. Take ethylene, burn it, you will get two molecules of carbon dioxide, two molecules of water. Take ethane, burn it, you will get two molecules of carbon dioxide, three molecules of water. And from this, energy of the carbon carbon bond is 85 kilo. What is the energy of the pi bond? This is made up of 1 sigma 1 pi and this is 1 sigma. So, this minus this is the energy of pi bond. So, pi bond has an energy of 55 kilo. So, now we have experimental proof that pi bonds are less stable than sigma bond. So, more sigma bond will be more favorable. So, reaction going from here to here is expected. Now, we look at this. How many sigma bonds are there in this starting material? 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sigma 1 pi, 1, 2, 3, 3 sigma 2 pi. So, according to what we just said, this should be more stable than this. But when we do the reaction, reaction goes from cyclic to open chain. So, why? Few minutes ago for 6 membered ring we said cyclic is more stable. In this case we are saying for some reason cyclic compound is less stable. Angle strain is present in the 4 membered ring. Okay, very good. What is that angle strain? If this 4 membered ring had to be planar according to our geometry, all angles should be 90 degrees. What type of carbon is this? sp3. So, 109 going to 90, I am forgetting the 28, okay. 109 going to 90, 109 going to 90. What about this? This is an sp2 carbon. So, 120 going to 90. 120 going to 90. 
so how much angle strain 30 30 60 60 plus 38 98 degrees of strain so though more sigma is more stable because of that 98 degrees of angle strain the four membered ring is unstable so we have learned this very important principle in a thermal reaction you always go from less stable to more stable Now, what is our problem? In photochemical, we went from open chain to cyclic. What is the principle in photochemical reaction? What is the UV of butadiene? 217. What is the UV of ethylene? 185. So, Butadiene absorbs at longer wavelength. So, when I do photochemistry, butadiene gets excited, ethylene does not get excited. So, in a photochemical reaction, the principle is more conjugated goes to less conjugate. In a thermal reaction, you always go from less stable to more stable. In a photochemical reaction, you always go from more conjugated to less conjugated, even if less conjugated is less stable. That is why photochemistry is important. You can prepare compounds which are less stable. Okay. But here, both went like this. Thermal also gives you ring compound, photochemical also gave you ring compound. Why? How many double bonds? Three double bonds, product has two double bonds. So, more conjugated has gone to less conjugated. In this case, less conjugated is also more stable, but that is not important. In photochemistry, you always go from more conjugated to less conjugated. So, two important principles that we have seen that in a thermal reaction you go from less stable to more stable, in a photochemical reaction you go from more conjugated to less conjugated. Okay. All. What are the books you can see? Conservation of orbital symmetry. R. B. Woodward. Walt Hoffman. Where have you heard this name Woodward apart from today? Yes? Calculation of lambda max. Okay. Very famous Woodward rules. Okay. What was his age when he made these rules? When he made these rules, he was 19 years old. Okay, and after 60 years, we are still teaching these rules. So, now is the time for you all to do something great. Okay, all good things are done at young age. All old people think they are very wise, but usually that is not correct. Okay, all good science is done at a young age. All right, so better start doing now. Okay, there are lots of stories about Woodward. Okay, number one. A Woodward lecture, 
being very arrogant, he brings his own chalk and his own duster. Okay? He does not believe in your chalk and your duster. Whichever country you are in, he uses his own chalk, own dust. Even in the days when everybody used slides, Woodward did not use slides. He started from left hand side of blackboard. His lecture is so planned that if he has a sufficiently large blackboard, his lecture ends in the right hand corner. Okay. Listening to Woodward lecture is something, I mean you are fortunate to listen to a Woodward lecture. Western world is very conscious of time. When they say lecture is 11 o'clock, you are supposed to be in the class at 11 o'clock, lecture is 11 to 12. So, lecture will start at 11, he will stop at 11.55, 5 minutes for questions, he will be out of the class at 12. For everybody in the western world, this is it. But Woodward was an exception. His lecture will be 2 p.m. onwards Woodward. Okay? So, he is the only person for whom no time schedule. It is said that when he was a young boy, when all American children are crazy about basketball and baseball, Woodward was interested in organic chemistry, even at the age of 6, 8, 10. End result is, in his B.Sc. exam, he failed in physics. His teachers asked the university to hold a special meeting and not any tin pot university, Harvard university. They held a special meeting, teacher said whatever is performance in physics, this person is exceptional, rule should not apply, his organic chemistry is better than ours. So, university must make exception and must pass it. After a lot of deliberation, he was passed. And 15 years down the line, he was appointed professor in Harvard. Okay? In our country, you say physics may fail, and he cannot be appointed. Okay? So, that is the kind of person he was. Many stories are there about him. He then became what is called as Donner Professor. Say, when you become Donner Professor, what do you have to do? University, you are not fortunate to be the professor. University is fortunate to have him as a professor. Okay? So, he has no assigned duty. He need not come, he need not sit, they will have his name that he is Donner Professor. Woodward is a professor in our university. So, our university is great. Okay? Of course, they are very smart. They do not make you Donner Professor if you are that type of person. Okay? You become Donner Professor only when you work very hard. Okay. So, it is said that he will be in lab up to very late in the night, then he will take chemistry journals and read at home. And in America, an American wife does not appreciate that. So, married once, divorced, married second time, divorced, married third time, divorced. Okay? So, you may be a great person, but you have to pay. In Indian system, our wives are very tolerant. Okay? In the American system, that is not the case. Okay. So, that is the Woodward. Conservation of orbital symmetry, Woodward and Hoff. Okay. Let us orbital symmetry. Problem-solving approach. R. E. Lair and A. P. Moisha. Organic reactions. and orbital symmetry. Uh, 
okay. T L Gilchrist R C Storr. Frontier orbitals. An organic chemical reaction. Ian Fleming. You know Ian Fleming? You heard Ian Fleming? All James Bond novels are written by Ian Fleming. Okay, not the same Ian Fleming. All right. That is a different Ian Fleming. Okay. Okay. What is the purpose of writing this? We are going to choose many of the things from this book. Not that we won't from the others. All right. Purpose of writing this was to bring out this. So, for explaining pericyclic, orbitals are very important. So, our first job now is how to draw orbitals. Okay. What are the reacting orbitals? This is your sigma orbital. This is your pi orbital. So, sigma pi, pi star, sigma star. These are your bonding orbitals. These are your anti bonding orbitals. Okay? All right. So, how can I show that is atom A surrounded by electron, that is atom B surrounded by electron, hydrogen atom combining with hydrogen atom. Because that LCAO linear combination of atomic orbit. Okay. What are these dots supposed to show? The dots are supposed to show probability of finding the electron. So, more dots are here, therefore, more probability of finding the electron is between A and B. So, this is your picture in this sigma orbit. What are we showing? More probability of finding the electron is either here or there. This is your sigma star orbit. Okay. Boy meets girl gets married. So, what should happen? Husband should look only at wife, wife should look only at husband. Okay. Then somebody says something, I saw your husband with some other girl, then this picture happens. Wife is looking out of one window, husband is looking out of another window. Okay. So, normal picture, happy picture is this bonding, and happy picture is that. In molecules, it comes back very quickly to ground state. With human beings, it takes longer time. Okay. All right. So, that is the picture that you have. So, that is your sigma orbital and your 
sigma star. Okay. So, this is your p orbital that is your other p orbital. We can combine this orbital p 1 plus p 2, p 1 plus p 2 means plus plus minus minus. This is your pi orbital. P 1 minus P 2. Here both pluses are on the same side there plus and minus. So, you combine them thumb is plus. So, one combination is this second combination plus is combining with minus. So, this is your pi orbital and pi star orbital. So, we wrote the four orbitals of cyclobutene. Now, we have to write four orbitals of butadiene. Okay. pi 1, pi 2. I can combine them in positive manner pi 1 plus pi 2. This is corresponding to your butadiene orbital of lowest energy. Now, this is pi 1 minus pi 2 plus plus minus minus. This was positive combination. So, number 2 orbital and number 3 orbital had same sign. Here, number 2 orbital and number 3 orbital have opposite sign. Okay. Pi 1 star, pi 2 star. What is this? These are two anti bonding orbitals. I combine them in a positive manner when it is positive what should happen middle orbital should have same sign. So, this is your psi 3 orbital I combine them pi 1 star plus pi 2 star gives you psi 3 orbital and pi 1 star minus pi 2 star plus minus plus minus. So, in butadiene there are going to be four orbitals psi 1, psi 1 will be plus 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 plus, psi 2 will be plus plus minus minus, psi 3 will be plus minus minus plus, psi 4 will be plus minus plus minus. Even if you are woken in the sleep, write the four orbitals of butadiene. It will come very fast. 
what is psi 1? Psi 2? Psi 3? Very good. So, both of them are in the sleep also, they can tell it all right. Okay. Very good. Okay. okay. What will you call this compound? How many carbons? 8 carbons. So, octa. How many double bonds? 4 double bonds. Octa tetrain. You want to put the numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7 octa tetrain. Okay. How did we make butadiene? We combined two ethylenes and built this. So, if I want to write how many double bonds? Four double bonds. So, there should be eight orbitals. Four will be bonding, four will be anti bonding. Okay. What should I combine? One butadiene has to be combined with another butadiene. So, let us write theta 1 orbital. Psi 1 plus psi 1. What is psi 1? Plus, 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 plus. So, and combination is positive. So, middle orbitals must have same sign. So, without mathematics, we are writing these orbitals. Okay. Psi 1 minus psi 1. What should I write next? Middle orbitals must have opposite sign. So, all 4 pluses on this side, on that side, all 4 minus. All right? Okay. Yes, please. What are the signs of psi 2? Plus, plus, minus, minus. What should I write now? When the sign is positive, these must have same sign. So, what was the sign here? Minus. So, minus minus plus plus middle orbitals have same sign okay plus plus minus minus now what? Middle orbitals have op opposite sign. Therefore, this fellow must be plus. Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. When the sign is positive, middle orbitals have same sign. When the sign is negative, 
middle orbitals have opposite side. So, these are your four bonding orbitals. Now, we are going to combine psi 3 orbitals of butadiene. What is your psi 3 orbitals? Plus, minus, minus, plus. What is the sign? Sign is positive. So, middle orbitals must have same sign. So, plus, minus, minus. Okay. If anybody has a problem, do not keep quiet. Yes, please. What should I write? Plus, minus, minus, plus. Now what? opposite sign. So, I must begin with minus, minus, plus, plus, minus. Psi 4 plus psi 4, plus, minus, plus, minus. Very good. All right. Miss, what should I write for last one? Psi four minus psi four. Plus minus plus minus. Plus minus plus minus. So whenever the sign is positive middle orbitals have same sign. When sign is negative, middle orbitals have opposite sign. So, we wrote orbitals of butadiene, we wrote orbitals of ethylene, we wrote orbitals of butadiene, from butadiene we wrote octatetrine. If I ask you write 16, no problem, combine these 8 orbitals theta 1 plus theta 1, theta 1 minus theta 1 and so on. So, very easy. All right. So, now we will come to our next question. What is this next question? Question of nodes. Here, there is no sign change. So, first orbital has no node. Second orbital has one node. Where is that sign change? One sign change. So, first orbital has no node, second orbital has one node, third orbital has two nodes, fourth orbital has three nodes, hundred orbital has ninety-nine nodes. Very simple. So, let us see. First orbital, how many nodes? No nodes. Zero nodes. How many is one node? Second orbital has one node. Third orbital, how many nodes? Two nodes. And the third orbital, the fourth orbital has three nodes. So, I can use concept of nodes in order to draw orbitals. Let us look at this. first orbital no nodes, second orbital one node, third orbital two nodes, fourth orbital three nodes, fifth orbital one, two, three, four nodes, sixth orbital one, two, three, four, five nodes, one, two, three, sorry. 4, 5, 6 nodes and that will have 7 nodes. So, we have learned to draw orbitals ethylene, 
butadiene octatetraene. What is our question? When we go to hexatriene, how can we combine? Ethylene was 2, went to butadiene 4, so combination was easy. Octatetraene 4 plus 4, combination gave this. But for hexatriene, combination will not work. So, for writing the orbitals of hexatriene, we will use the question of nodes. So, when we meet next time, we will start with that.